to Watch Me Code. In this episode, we're going to look at installing MongoDB on a Mac. Now, you can head over to mongodb.org and see all kinds of information about what this database actually is. And on the site, you'll also find information on how to install MongoDB on your Mac. Now, honestly, I just did a Google search for install MongoDB on Mac, and I got to this page pretty quickly. I didn't have to search through the site. So if you look through the instructions here, you'll see several different methods of installing MongoDB. There's the homebrew version, and then there's the manual version. And of course, down here, you'll have the run MongoDB instructions. Now, I prefer the homebrew approach to installing things on my Mac. It generally makes my life very easy, and I don't really have to worry about manually compiling things. So I'm going to go ahead and do the homebrew version. First thing I'm going to do is say brew update to make sure I have all the latest packages and version information that I'll be able to download. All right, now that I have everything updated inside of Homebrew, I'm going to do brew install MongoDB. And this is going to download Mongo, whatever the latest version is, and it's going to do all of the installation for me. Now, of course, I've previously had MongoDB installed and compiled and everything, so this went pretty quickly on my box. But it might take a few more minutes, a few more seconds. It might actually have to do a little bit of real work on your box. Don't worry about it, though. It's a pretty quick install as long as you have all the right compiler tools and everything installed on your box already. Having done this, we're now ready to run MongoDB. There's a couple of different ways to do this. The instructions that we have down here at the very end tell us that we can use launch control to both load and unload MongoDB, or we can simply run MongoD from the command line using this configuration that they specified here. So before I get into all of this, I want to show you the basics of actually running MongoDB as a server on your box. So I'm going to create a new tab in my terminal so that I don't lose all of this information. And I'm going to start just by running MongoD. And we're going to see that we got a big bunch of errors at this point. We got a permission denied, and it's asking whether or not Mongo is already running. And the truth is, it's not running yet. MongoD is the server, but we can't just run MongoD at this point because it's trying to look for files and folders that it doesn't have access to. Now, if you want to use the default settings for MongoD, you're going to have to create a folder called slash data slash db. And in order to do that, I'll have to run this as sudo. So I'm going to say sudo make dir dash p slash data slash db. Now this will be the folder where Mongo stores all of its database files. Having created that, if I try to run MongoD again, I'm still going to get errors because I don't have permissions unless I'm running as sudo again. So I'm going to say sudo MongoD, and it will get everything up and running for me. We now have a MongoDB server running. I can come over here to a new terminal, and I can say Mongo, which will get me into the MongoDB shell connecting to the server that I have running. Now, I'm not going to show you how to actually do anything in this episode. That'll come up next. This will just get MongoDB up and running inside of your Mac and let you verify that it actually is running correctly. I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to close down my server here. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up the automatic loading of MongoDB on my system. I don't want to have it running in that slash root folder. And I'm going to do this for a couple of reasons. I don't want to have MongoDB running as sudo because I don't want it to have complete access to my system. And I don't want to have the data in that particular folder on the root of the drive. So instead, if we wanted to just run MongoDB on its own without having it installed as a service, I could copy and paste this command line right here, run this from a different terminal window, and MongoDB does get itself up and running. Again, I can run the Mongo command shell, and we can see that it is connecting to the database server. That's great if you don't want to have MongoDB running all the time. You can just stand it up and tear it down whenever you need to using the MongoD command with this configuration. I don't want to have to stand it up and tear it down all the time, though, because I'm constantly using MongoDB. I use it for most of my projects on my Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and do the launch control setup here. I'm just going to copy and paste this launch control load statement, open a new terminal window, paste it in here, go ahead and run that. And it says it's already loaded on my box because, like I said, I've already had MongoDB installed on my system. But if you don't have MongoDB installed already, you'll get a different message output here. Having done that, MongoDB will automatically start every time my box boots. That's exactly what I want because I'm constantly using MongoDB. Now there's one last thing I want to show you real quick, and that's this configuration file. If I load this configuration file into Vim, for example, 
we can see that there is a little bit of configuration that tells me where the database is actually going to be located, tells me the log path, and it also sets things up so that it only accepts connections from the local IP address. And this is kind of important in your development environment because you don't really want external connections getting into MongoDB on your box. Now, production systems, that's a completely different story. I'm not even going to touch production at this point. We're just setting up the Mac so that we can use MongoDB in our development environment. And having done all of that, having shown you all of these options, you should have MongoDB up and running and ready to go. And I'll have another episode coming up pretty quickly here where I'll show you how to use MongoDB to do a little bit of development. Thank you.